Hi, I'm John Higgins and welcome to my channel. This video is the next in my series of uh, creating my own virtual pipe organ. And as you can see here, I've completed the first step which is uh, removing all of the original components out of the organ. So it was a 1963 Wurlitzer classic organ. And so you might be asking what's the purpose of this video? Well, there isn't any particularly great um, value for some people, I suppose, but I wanted to share something of the fascinating technology of these instruments and how they were leading the way in their day. So this particular organ was um, built in 1963, but the original electrical wiring diagrams, which I have, uh, are labelled as 1958. So that gives you an idea of the technology. And as you can see, everything is very, very solidly built, which I'll show you more in a moment. And I'm very thankful to some of my friends, um, Dave and Alan, who helped me uh, lift all of these things out. Uh, as, you, as I mentioned last video, uh, the back injury and the treatment I'm undergoing is not allowing me to do any lifting at the moment. So it was a great help to have them. So let's explore some of the fascinating features of this instrument, which uh, is now going into retirement. The first thing of interest here is, uh, this is a piece of beautiful timber uh, from the original panelling, which was underneath the bottom manual. It has the nameplate, so you can see it's a well, it's a model 462, sorry, 4602. And the serial number is 247327. And it was uh, constructed with the um, 115 volt system from America, but it was adapted to 50 hertz. And it draws 325 watts, which is quite a lot of power. And that's because of um, the electric blower motor and um, all of the valve amplifier that it runs. And you can see that it was manufactured by the Wurlitzer Company um, in New York, the USA. Now when I was removing this instrument it was um, quite a challenge because all the wiring was interconnected and there was um, some of it didn't have any plugs where you could easily disconnect and remove things. So what we have here is the blower enclosure. So on this end we have a small electric motor uh, which was designed uh, to uh, have bearings that you can lubricate so you can see the lubrication ports here where you use a like a sewing machine oil, a very light oil to lubricate it and you can see the um, the rubber flexible coupling which connects the motor to the blower which is inside and if I zoom around here you can see that this motor is a 115 volt and um, approximately 1 to 1.2 amp and so that's what powers this instrument if we move to the side here this is a soundproof enclosure so I've already undone the screws so I can do this quickly the first layer is um, quite a dense um, piece of timber and we have a soundproof insulation layer then we have another layer of um, chipboard protection so you can see just the detail of how well it was designed and thought through to make sure that this instrument was as quiet as possible. Now inside here, there's the drive shaft and the coupling that comes through, and this is the cast housing for the air blower. There's a fan inside, but you'll notice that everything is sealed and there's no inlet. For example, most pipe organs, they'll have a, an inlet of, to the blower um, where it will draw air in and pump it through into the bellows 
Wurlitzer realised that temperature changes um, have a significant impact on tuning, as most organists would know. And so what they've, they've done here is they've had the entire unit is fully sealed. It's, it, the term is hermetically sealed, so that this box of vibrating reeds is kept completely clean of any dust and dirt, and it also helps to stabilise the temperature inside this insulated box, and it, and it keeps it very quiet. Uh, you can see there's a number of um, boxes here that are labelled, and each one of those is full of a series of vibrating reeds. And the air from the blower blows over these set of reeds, and they are vibrating continuously all the time. Uh, even when the keys are, and the notes are not being pressed, they are vibrating all the time. And at the end of those vibrating reeds are electrical pickups. And that's what provides the signal or the sound wave that is then taken back to the amplifier. And by depending on the position of the electrical pickup, if it's towards the end of the reed, a very um, sharp waveform edge is picked up which creates more rich harmonics giving a reedy sound whereas if the electrical pickup is towards the middle of the reed a much softer smoother waveform is created giving the flute sound and that's how they are able to achieve, achieve quite a remarkable um, tonal palette for such a small instrument at the time. So the blower box and motor that, and, and that you've just seen in the reeds was the lungs of the instrument. Here is really the heartbeat of the instrument, which is quite remarkable um, valve amplifier. So you can see these are um, original valves, of, uh, like the old um, valve radio amplifiers. It's referred here as a as a tone cabinet 250 watts and there's a plug here for the speakers the swell pedal to control the volume um, there's different volume settings for the bass and um, treble um, where you can also adjust bias we have a series of re uh, uh, sorry a series of valves here on top which amplify the signals and it creates a very warm and lovely sound quite a large transformer which is uh, makes this very heavy and uh, there's a, a company near melbourne called resurrection radios who very kindly rebuilt this for me many years ago and it was it's still in perfect working order there's a circuit breaker here and a reed bias which uh, is basically to adjust feedback or buzzing sound that sometimes is heard and and that um, can be adjusted to tune through this um, variable resistor potentiometer here which is called a hum balance quite an interesting term so if that isn't adjusted correctly it sounds like a swarm of bees but as you adjust it it, it um, almost has gone completely and you can see the original label here of the world. It's a company. It's a amplifier model 7044. It's rather difficult to see everything here, but we have the switching rail for all of the stop action. So on the pedal, board on 16, Gadak 16 foot horn eight foot flute eight foot flute dolce and the great manual bass flute 16 bassoon trumpet french horn solicinal clarinet oboe orchestral flute nazard piccolo tierce and full ensemble um, a number of different tremulant settings and sorry that was the swell division and here's the great division where it has some presets for full ensemble and cathedral organ, board on, diapason, trumpet, flute, um, dulce, dulciana, flute, 12th and 15th.